GeoGebra program to help us with our linear programming. First, we've got this problem that comes from the Math 2 course guide from Pinker School. It is the um, tapes versus CDs example. So let's read it together. Some, suppose you want to buy some tapes and CDs. You can buy up to 11 tapes, you can buy up to 7 CDs, but you want at least 3. You must get enough tapes or CDs to hold at least 10 hours of music. Each tape holds about 45 minutes of music, and each CD holds an hour. A tape costs $8, and a CD costs $12. So how many tapes and CDs should you buy to minimize your cost? First, we must define our variables. Let's use X and Y so it's easier for the graphing. So our first one will be X equals the number of tapes we buy. Let's be very specific when we use, when we define our variables. Y equals the number of CDs we buy. Okay, so now we need to define our constraints. And we'll do this through a few inequalities. The first one comes from this sentence here. You can buy up to 11 tapes. Okay, so we must have, we're gonna do tapes, which is X. And we're gonna put in an equation x is less than or equal to 11. All right. Now we can go on to our next one, which is going to be a compound inequality about the CDs. So we're going to say that we must have at least three CDs. Three is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 7. And we have one more constraint that we have to worry about which is, has to do with all the time. So we know that CDs and tapes must add up to about 10 hours of music. Let's put it all into minutes. So 10 hours of music would be 600 minutes, will be less than or equal to, and we're in minutes, so 45 times the number of tapes, x plus 60 minutes times the number of CDs. So 60 times the number of CDs. So here are our three constraints. Last part we have to define is our objective function. We want to minimize our cost, right? So we'll write that, minimize total cost. We'll call it T. And we'll say T is a function of X and Y. And it equals 8 times the number of tapes plus 12 times the number of CDs. All right, so here is our problem defined. Now we want to switch over to GeoGebra. All right, so we go web.geogebra.org. We're gonna start in the algebra section. So we'll go into the algebra section. Okay, and now conveniently my constraints are here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to type my inequalities into the input bar on the left um, one by one. A colon then do a space, and I'm going to define it as x, and we're going to do less than and an equal sign. That's telling GeoGebra you want less than or equal to 11. Okay, you can see that it's already started to create um, this shaded region. It knows that x is less than 11, so it shades this region to the left. Okay, so I'm here under my inequality section. I've got this first inequality. As I go through, I want to also create the line that is this blue line. Okay, right now I just have the inequality. I need to create the actual linear function. So I am also going to create b is x equals 11. Right, that's the equation of this vertical line right here. And it'll put them into two different sections. One's inequalities, one's lines. All right, let's create the other one. Now I'm going to create another, the second inequality, my second constraint, which is 3 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 7. Okay, now I've got this section right here. I'm going to start to see that there's some overlap here. After I do that, I want to create two lines. One's going to be for this horizontal line right here, and one's going to be for this horizontal line right here. So my first one, I'm going to call it D now, which is y equals 3. And I'm going to create E, which is y equals 7. Those are the associated linear functions that go along with this second inequality. Now let's create my 
my third constraint. And now you can start to see that we've got some overlap. In order to make this a little bit clearer, let's go up to the first inequality and let's click on that right click. We can go object properties. We get this menu over here. So now I can change the color. Let's leave that one as blue, but let's change this style. If I go to style, I can get standard. Let's do it as hatch. So I can start to see that that's the region for my first inequality. Now, if we click on our second one, second inequality, we can go over, let's change the color this time. Let's make it red and let's do a honeycomb pattern. That sounds interesting. All right, now my third one, let's adjust the object properties, color, let's make it black and we'll just leave it as shaded for now. All right, so now I can close out that menu then I come here, and if I zoom in a little bit, I can start to see where is the region where all three of these overlap. And GeoGebra will help to sort it out. If I go over here, I can, you can see, if I put my cursor over this region, you can see that it highlights on the left, it highlights the two inequalities that are satisfied. You know, likewise, if I'm over here, it'll start to adjust and kind of show you where all the ones that are satisfied. We can clearly see in this region, is the only region where I have all of my patterns. So I've got the black, I've got the red honeycomb, and the blue blue lines. So I know that this is going to be my region where my where we will be able to minimize our total cost. It's where all the inequalities are satisfied. Now, because we put an equal sign, we know it's just a linear function. Okay, and GeoGebra will reduce that for us um, without even asking, which is good and bad. All right, so now that I know this region that I'm looking at, I can kind of remember that region, okay, and I'm just going to hide my inequalities. Now I've just got the lines that you see here, okay? So now I'm going to go to my point menu up on the top left, and I'm going to do the intersection. This is the easiest way to kind of find the intersection between each line. And I just go over here, I can see that these two lines are highlighted. Boom. And I click on each line. And now I've got A, B, C, and D. All right, it creates this trapezoid right here. If I want, I can highlight that region by creating a polygon. And I click on all four points. And I know that this is my region that I'm looking for. And these are my vertices of that region. Okay. Let's hide the labels and you'll see why in a second. Okay, but let's remember we've got them right here. We can see now this menu right here, this three three lines will help you get to the menu. I'm gonna view our spreadsheet, which is gonna help us get our final solution. So in this top row, I'm gonna type in the point. And then the second one, we're gonna have our total cost. C or T. So my point, I can just simply put A, and it knows to look at this A right here. It's nice and convenient. Then I type B, then I type C, then I type D. Those are my points that I want to look at. So now I can, I can move this over a bit so I can see. We want to look at this total cost equation. And I can write equals. That, that note lets the spreadsheet know that I want to create an equation. And then I type 8 times. Now follow along closely here. I've got x, my x variable of this point right here, which is an a2. Okay, 8 times the x value of a2 plus 12 times the y value of a2. And that right there, my friends, is the total cost if we were to look at the combination of four tapes and seven CDs. Okay, now. What's really convenient is I can take, grab this little square in the bottom right corner, click on it, and just drag it down. And it knows to look at these values rather than the one above it, okay? So 110.67 will be my combination of nine and a third tapes and three CDs.